Okay, uh, good morning to all of you. It's uh, 3.30 in the afternoon here in Israel. And uh, as I said to the group just a few minutes ago, this is the highlight of the week for me. I'm very happy to be here. And uh, I wanted to thank Lori again and again for being the hostess with the mostest uh, and for taping this, or shall I say recording this, and then sending it to Aaron and then Aaron posts it on YouTube, so many more people are getting the uh, the message. So I'm very, very happy about that. I don't want to mention names, uh, but there's somebody very important on TV here who we are now in touch with. And uh, Rachel actually met him a few times uh, when Rachel worked on, TV, on the, in the TV. As Rachel used to be a TV announcer, so that she, they know each other. And uh, he did a, um, uh, a podcast with an American Jewish lady about what she predicts as a pogrom, that the Muslims are preparing a pogrom, massive pogrom in the United States against the Jewish people. Um, and so my, the host here... He get, huh? It's no longer just uh, speculation on his part. Well, I say it's not going to be a pogrom. I say it's going to be a holocaust. I say it's going to be a killing of many, many Jews and Christian spouses. And uh, unless they flee from the United States. And um, strange things are happening in the States. Now there's a conspiracy theory that nobody was shooting at Trump the second time. And it's all about a red flag. And I mean, you know, my wife says to me, better that I stay in Israel. So, you know, I, I'm telling you, you guys pray for us. That's wonderful. But I'm going to pray for America because America has a problem. And uh, America is kind of losing it. And here in Israel, we have ultra-left people who want to overthrow the regime. And there are only 3,000 of them compared to 5.6 million Israelis who support Netanyahu. So, uh, you know, you have deep state everywhere. So we're watching all these things uh, very carefully. But anyway, um, so I called uh, the host of the podcast and I told him, listen, this is not uh, a pogrom. This is going to be a massive attack on the Jews in America by the Muslims, by the neo-Nazis, uh, by Black Lives Matter, by Antifa. And um, if a civil war breaks out uh, in America, both the left and the right, are going to blame the Jews for everything, and uh, we see we've seen it so much in history, which means that uh, there will have to be a massive flight of Jews uh, and Christian spouses to Israel. And again, that's one of the reasons why I founded the Judeo Christian Bible Block Party, because we're going to have many Christians coming to live here with their Jewish families. Uh, so it's a very exciting time, very scary time, but very exciting time. Uh, there's also a gentleman uh, who I've been talking to, and uh, he's 90 years old, but he's he's with it. And he said to me that he's in touch with different groups who are, who are believers, they're Christians. Um, but they claim Jewish uh, background, uh, and that uh, they, over the centuries they converted to Christianity. They don't want to move to Israel. So, of course, the uh, rabbinate is against it and the government is against it. Uh, but according to the way I think, and I'm very unusual uh, compared to everyone else, um, I think that all these wars that are happening around Israel uh, were created by God uh, in order for Israel's uh, boundaries to expand and to fill up these new boundaries with Jews and Christians who will be coming from all over the world. And... Uh, I have two suggested names, the United States of Israel, because I think I, I think that Lebanon is going to be part of Israel. It's in the Bible, by the way. Um, and if we go from the Nile to the Euphrates, which is also something I think is going to happen eventually, not because we want it, we don't want it, but God has a plan for that. So uh, there will be, uh, I think, uh, a very considerable settlement by Christians in Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Saudi, and uh, Sinai, of course, uh, from the Nile to the Euphrates. Um, 
Another name which would work very well is the Commonwealth of Israel. And the, the, to have the Commonwealth of Israel, we're going to need uh, literally tens of millions of Christians come live here. Now, the rabbit is going to freak out when they hear what I'm saying. And I, I'm not saying that that I want the, the Christians to come live in Jerusalem. Uh, they'll be welcome to visit, but uh, there will be states, and Lebanon will become, again, a Christian uh, state. Uh, not necessarily speaking Arabic, by the way, which was the plan in the 1940s, uh, but there will be many Christians, and there will be some Jews who will live with them in Lebanon or in Syria. And uh, I think I mentioned last week about the Druze people in the south of Syria, didn't I? Does anyone remember that I spoke about that? Yes, I yes, do. Did. Yes. Oh, okay, so now I wanted to add to that. Uh, have you guys heard about the missile from Yemen that was shot down uh, over the center of Israel a few days ago? Yeah. Yes. Well, now, today they announced that uh, Yemen, uh, the Houthis, have sent 1,500 soldiers to Syria, to the Golan Heights, and these 1,500 Houthis are right on the border with the Golan, which means there's going to be a ground battle uh, with uh, the Houthis. So that's the breaking news uh, from, from the Houthis today. Um, again, who's in the south of Syria? The Druze. And the Druze are not happy about the Houthis and the Syrians and the Iranians uh, basically kicking them around. The Druze are getting kicked around now by the Iranians and the proxies. So this is something we need to be watching. Um, I think that uh, what's going to happen, and again, I want to stress, I am not a person who says, let's go conquer Lebanon or let's go conquer Syria. Uh, or let's go conquer Jordan. I don't want to conquer anything. I'm a Jewish person who loves Israel, wants to be in my home here and leave me alone. You know, I mean, that's, the, that's the typical approach. But I think what Iran is orchestrating is a massive attack all at once uh, against Israel, which was the plan of the Hamas. Uh, but the Hamas jumped the gun and attacked us on October 7th uh, without consulting with Hezbollah and Iran. So that, that whole scenario got postponed by 12 months. Uh, we're only, you know, two weeks away from a whole year of fighting uh, from October the 7th. Um, so it is indeed a, a reality that the Houthis will attack uh, from the Golan Heights. The Iranians will not attack us. They don't want to get counterattacked, but they will get counterattacked. Um, Hezbollah in Lebanon. Um, uh, there are massive forces uh, infiltrating Jordan. Uh, we have to watch very carefully uh, and be ready. Are you listening? Be ready to go into Jordan in order to protect King Abdullah from these enemies who are mostly Shiites. Uh, don't forget, Abdullah is a Sunni Muslim. And we have an agreement. Uh, Israel has saved the hides of the Jordanian kings and families uh, many times. Um, also, the Saudis are not happy about the Shiites coming in and uh, overthrowing everybody. But that's the Iranian plan. Uh, so I think we're going to be seeing uh, a very massive attack on all fronts. Uh, the question is, do we start it or do the Iranian proxies start it? I think the Iranian proxies are going to start it. I think uh, Netanyahu is uh, trying to buy more time um, because we should have attacked Lebanon a long time ago, but they were waiting and waiting and waiting. By the way, uh, did, did any of you notice, it is a rhetorical question, you don't have to answer it, uh, that uh, Israel launched Arrow 2, Arrow 3, uh, Israel launched a number of missiles, uh, which they said could not bring down the ballistic missile from the Houthis. You all heard about that, yes? Yes. Yes. And uh, finally, now listen to this. Finally, the missile just disintegrated. You heard about that also. <laughs> and uh, But the warhead hit the ground. Israel didn't take out the warhead. Oh. 
Now, what do I find interesting about that? And of course, it wasn't mentioned at all in the media, but I'm telling you that my personal belief is that Israel used the laser beam defense system. Uh, the laser doesn't necessarily blow up uh, an incoming missile, but it does disintegrate it. So I think that uh, Israel used the laser and Israel's trying to not talk about it. And I really shouldn't be talking about it. But uh, that's why you have me, you know, because I'm not Israeli government and uh, m my boss is either my wife or God, you know. So I, 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 I'm, I'm here to tell you the truth as I understand it. And uh, I think people are not stupid on the other side. You know, I think the other side understands that we, this was a test uh, case scenario uh, of the laser beam, the Nautilus, uh, bringing down the missile. And uh, it's one of the reasons why... Uh, no alarm was issued. The sirens did not go off. And uh, that, that missile was in the year 12 minutes. And uh, it was taken down. Um, they say it was maybe knocked out of the air uh, by the concussion of the explosions of the Arrow 2, Arrow 3. So it could be. I don't know. I'm just, saying, I'm just offering the possibility that uh, there was a laser which sliced uh, the missile in half. And as I mentioned, uh, I think last time, uh, if you all remember uh, Manuel Noriega in uh, Panama, the drug running uh, military president of Panama, um, when the US went in to depose him and arrest him, uh, Panamanians were complaining that the US was using some kind of a laser system which was slicing Panamanians in half. Um, and uh, America never talked about it, but uh, I think that was a test. Uh, but but the thing is, that, what does a laser do? It slices things in half. And I think it sliced the, uh, the uh, incoming uh, missile in half, but the warhead came down. So uh, you guys must think I'm completely crazy. I don't know. But anyway, so uh, we are here, we are waiting. Uh, Houthis uh, in South Syria are preparing for a, a land war, but also the Houthis are there to launch UAVs. Uh, and they are, the Iranians are giving them all the UAVs they want. They're gonna launch them from the south of Syria. So it's not just uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon launching rockets, missiles, and UAVs. So Israel is very, very much on edge at this time. Um, the Israeli soldiers have a very high spirit, uh, but the Israeli soldiers have been away from their homes on the average for 200 days out of the last year. I mean, think for a moment, young soldiers with wives and children, uh, very hard for them to be away from their families such a long time. Uh, when I was in artillery uh, reserves in the 19... Uh, 1973 to 1989, every time I went off for 30 days, my wife went ballistic. She was going crazy. She said, oh, you're going to summer camp with your buddies. And I'm stuck here with the little kids. My kids were babies at the time. Uh, and we really didn't have anyone to help us. So um, a lot of Israeli soldiers are, are losing their homes, losing their businesses. Uh, some are getting divorced. There's stuff going on. It's not an easy time for Israel right now. Um, and we're watching. The last thing we need is uh, the, the King Abdullah fall from power, and then Israel has to go in and invade Jordan uh, to make sure that these terrorists are not coming across the Jordan River. And uh, the Jordan River is a border of 200 miles, and it's a peace border, but it's not going to be a peace border for very long. So we're watching that all very closely. Uh, we are in a very, very uh, sensitive, vulnerable situation at this time. Um, otherwise, we're fine. Rachel and I are fine. The kids are fine. Everyone is doing their thing. Uh, I'm planning to come to the States in January. Um, as you all know, I think I mentioned I have just completed the second edition of my fourth book on the Bible Block Party. Uh, so in the next few days, I'm going to be going to uh, different publishers in Israel to see if they're interested. Uh, and also to make sure that they don't bury the book. Some publishers sign an agreement with you. And then they, they just never publish the book if they get 
political orders to block the book. So as you all know from the Thursday group, there are some people who are telling me, just come to the States in January, bring the book with you, and we will print it privately and, uh, and keep it under the control of our Bible-believing Judeo-Christian group in Texas. Uh, so that might be in, in, in January. So meanwhile, I'm going to be running around uh, checking out publishers. Also, uh, I'm still negotiating, but they're working on the, on the new book of Elchanan Shiloh about the 1969 to 1971 settler movement, uh, which I was a part of when I came to Israel. Um, that'll be interesting because I mentioned five times uh, in the book uh, regarding things that I did with this group. And we were kind of uh, romantic uh, uh, revolutionaries. Usually revolutionaries are very romantic, meaning not uh, realistic. And everywhere we went, we got pulled down by Moshe Dayan and the Israeli government. And we had a good time. Uh, this was after the Six Day War, after 1967, and we were planting seeds for uh, Israeli settlements to be put up in Judea and Samaria. And praise God, today in Judea and Samaria, we have over half a million Jews living there. Um, it's going to happen in Gaza. We had 10,000 Jews in Gaza who were kicked out of their homes by Sharon and four settlements in Samaria that were shut down by Sharon. All these settlements are going to be put up again. So uh, things are very fluid here in Israel. And so we're going to see how that all develops. Um, I sent to Lori, uh, I don't know, Lori, if you checked the, the email I sent you about half an hour ago, uh, that a Ukrainian uh, special unit uh, attacked a Russian unit in Syria and uh, blew up uh, drones and uh, secret weapons that the Russians had there. Did you did you read that or not yet? Sorry, I haven't seen it yet. Well, you have it in your email, and uh, if you want, uh, uh, send it out to people who ever ask for it there, or people can write to me and I'll send it to them. It's from Arut Sheva, Arut Seven. And uh, but I think it's very unusual that uh, a, a, a top uh, Ukrainian military unit attacked the Russians in uh, Syria. <laughs> so my wife said to me, oh, now the Ukrainians are the allies. You know, Israel is very careful because uh, the Russians uh, are, are too close. The Ukrainians are too close. And uh, in order not to get nuked by the Russians, we have to be very careful not to tread on their toes too much. So um, let me just say, I don't envy Netanyahu. He has a very tough job. Uh, international politics, Washington, Moscow, Kiev and the Ukraine, uh, Egypt. We still don't know what's going to happen with Egypt because Egypt is a wild card. We don't know what's going to happen with Turkey because Turkey is a wild card. So uh, we're here, and uh, meanwhile, praise God, God is, has, is shielding us. We're under the wings of the Almighty, and so I'm very happy that uh, we're all here, we're all alive. Um, let me think what else. You know what? If there are any questions, you can go ahead and unmute yourselves one by one, ask the questions, and I'll probably have other stuff. There's so much stuff happening that, that my brain explodes, so uh, you help me to unload the, the information. So if there's anyone with a question or a, uh, a comment, I'm ready. Yeah, Avi, I have a question. With the approaching High Holy Days, what are the odds or possibilities that the Arabs might take advantage and launch some sort of attack on those days? The answer is yes. How do you like that complicated answer? Yeah, um, complicated, yeah. Uh, I asked because they have a history of doing that, of course. 1973 was the Yom Kippur War, and then Simcha Torah is when Hamas chose to attack last year. Listen, you have to remember, uh, Neil, that uh, the Muslims uh, uh, will attack anything uh, regarding the Jewish faith or the Christian faith. Uh, they will attack holy places. They will attack countries. Uh, I, I mean, you know, America got attacked on 9-11. I don't know if you all know what 9-11 was, but 9-11 was the defeat of the Christians um, 
uh, or, or the Muslims. So 9-11 had a very important uh, historical meaning to it. And that's why they attacked on 9-11. Uh, so, you know, I mean, we're all hoping that we will be okay on the high holidays. Uh, we will all be going to synagogue with our pistols and our M16s. So um, anything can happen. And we're only two weeks away. Good question. Yes, Lori. Uh, could you talk about the significance of uh, this recent development with the UN and a quote unquote Palestinian state with the UN? Well, um, the United Nations has never been a friend of Israel. The United Nations um, has like 200 member countries. Um, I think about 50 of them are Muslim. Uh, 50 of them are from uh, six, 60 or 70 are from Africa and Latin American countries, uh, former Soviet states. Um, now you've got countries like Ireland and Norway, which have become, uh, uh, I don't want to say anti-Semitic, but anti-Israel. Um, I would say maybe there are 15 or 20 countries which are pro-Israel. Um, but even the pro-Israel countries like England and Germany are not uh, providing weapons that we were, uh, that we paid for, that we asked for. Canada is uh, withholding weapons. So um, listen, you know, I, I, I am, I'm not a military person. I'm not in any position of high authority. I just follow the news uh, announcements. But, uh, I mean, I have no idea what our armaments uh, uh, inventory is. I don't know what we can fight uh, with. Uh, we do have weapons, I, I, but I don't know where it's all going to go. But the UN uh, is trying to ramrod a Palestinian state down our throats. Um, but it's never going to happen. I don't know if I answered your question, Laurie, but... Uh, yeah, it's I mean, it seemed like a nothing burger to me, but just more making official what was already there. <laughs> Let me just say one thing. I'm, you know, I'm supposedly, you know, of course, I'm not an Israeli official, uh, official official. Uh, but uh, if uh, if Harris gets elected, she will probably join the U.N., in forcing a Palestinian state on uh, uh, Israel because she keeps talking about a Palestinian state, which is complete insanity. Um, if Trump wins, God willing, uh, I think Trump is going to put a stop to it. So I, I don't know yet what's going to happen, but uh, it has become very clear that it is either the Palestinians or the Israelis. One of them is going to lose. And that means there's no room for two states. Country is too small for a two-state solution. So I do know there's a lot of talk in Israel now about finding humanitarian solutions to uh, uh, removing uh, a lot of this population, uh, which is because of their Islamic, I don't want to say faith, their Islamic psychosis. Uh, they are not capable of peace with the Jews or peace with the Christians. Uh, you know, I want to tell you something. As, as I was working on my uh, second edition of my fourth book, uh, I found something which I had forgotten, but I write things. I learn things when I read my writings because it reminds me there's so much going on. When the Oslo Accords were signed in 1993, um, uh, Elias Frage, who was the mayor of Bethlehem, Christian mayor of Bethlehem, he came to Yitzhak Rabin, he said, listen, this is crazy. You cannot hand over Bethlehem to the Muslims, to the Palestinian Authority. That's going to be the end of Bethlehem. It's going to be the end of the Christian presence in Bethlehem. And the Rabin said to them, listen, I'm ready to forestall handing over Bethlehem to the Palestinian Authority. If you can get the Catholic Church and the Greek Orthodox Church to agree. Well, they didn't agree. So the worst enemy of the Christians in Bethlehem and Nazareth and in the Holy Land, the worst enemy is the church. The Catholic Church, the Greek Orthodox Church, uh, they are so in bed with the Muslims 
uh, and they betray their own people. And I'm not a Christian, I'm a Jew, but I'm angry with the churches for stabbing the Christian population in the back. And again, one of the reasons for the Judeo-Christian Bible Block Party is going to be to protect the Christian population living in Israel. But my point is we're going to have a lot more Christians coming home to Israel with American uh, Jewish spouses. You know, it's like I, I, I'm sitting here talking to you guys. It's so clear to me. It's so obvious. And I don't see in the Israeli government anyone talking. And I'm trying to get onto TV programs. You know, in the States, I've been on Fox News three times. I've been on CBN quite a few times. I've been on many different Christian radio and TV stations. Here in Israel, nobody wants to hear anything. Uh, we Jews are supposedly the smartest people in the world. Well, I have some serious questions about that. The handwriting is on the wall. So my, my purpose, as I see it, is to talk to you all and give you the information. Uh, if you don't like it, you know, then uh, you can always walk away. But I, I think that there are people who are listening and people who are watching. And in the end, it doesn't even matter what I say because God has a plan. And God's going to do what God's going to do. God wants the Jews and the Christians in Israel and in Jerusalem and in the countries surrounding Israel uh, because the Messiah, you know, we Jews are blind. We don't know the Messiahs. The Messiah, when he comes or returns, will be on the Mount of Olives for all of us. If he's coming only for the Jews, he's not the Messiah. If he's coming only, only for the Southern Baptists, he's not the Messiah. He's coming for everyone. And uh, this is what I'm, I'm just trying to watch, you know, the, the preparations for the coming or the return of the Messiah. And that's one of the reasons why I'm saying Lebanon used to be, a, uh, at least for a few decades, a Christian Arab country. Now, I'm not so sure anymore about the Arab business because the churches there are not friendly to the Jews and not to Israel. But there's going to be a change. And when the Jews and Christians come home from all over the world, uh, I think there has to be a program to encourage Christians and Jews to live in Lebanon. Maybe I'm nuts. I don't know. You know, my wife, when we first met, she the first two things she said to me that I'm that I'm crazy, and secondly, that I don't know anything. But being married to Rachel 55 years, I'm beginning to know things now. Any other questions? No question, but I do have a comment. Sure. Of course, with the latest assassination attempt on Donald Trump, it should be of concern to all of us that this was not a decision that Trump made ahead of time. In other words, this was just a last minute decision to go out onto the golf course. And yet somehow the would be assassin knew that somehow Trump was going to be there. So we think about that. We should be alarmed about what that could mean. Well, yes, and also, as I said at the beginning of this uh, Zoom uh, meeting, uh, I said that uh, I'm very afraid of a red flag. And uh, uh, it's enough. In other words, you can say, for example, that Trump staged it. You can say, for example, well, somebody in the Democrats knew he was going to be there even at the last moment, and they have their people ready to go and kill him. Uh, so it could go either way. But the result, the end result of uh, the second assassination attempt could spark a civil war in the United States. Because the, the country is 50-50. I would say it's 70 or 30. But the people who control today are that 30%. And they're violent and they're liars. And things are being set up to, to, to kill Trump. And I'm praying for Trump. I want you to know, we have 10 votes for Trump coming from my family here in Israel, just us. So, um, I mean, you know, we're, we're with Trump. But but you all know I had a lunch with a neo-Nazi. Uh, I didn't know he was a neo-Nazi. I just knew he was a, a militia man. And he said, the first thing we're going to do is kill all the Jews in America. Because the Jews are Bolsheviks. They vote for the Democrats. I, I sent a letter about this to the president of Israel, uh, Itzhak Herzog, 
And I sent him a very angry letter afterwards. He never even said thank you. So he said thank you. But I'm trying to get on to Israeli TV, trying to get on to Israeli radio, trying to meet top people. And you know what? The Jews in Israel just don't care about the Jews in America. And the Jews in America don't care about the Jews in, in Israel. So regarding Trump, the, the vast majority of the 500,000 American citizens voting here, 500,000, the vast majority vote Trump. So what, what we are all trying to do is get the American citizens at least to show up and vote because 500,000 votes, uh, Trump has better chances of uh, getting elected. I just, I just pray that they don't kill him. I, I don't know what's going on. I, I, I don't think that uh, Trump set it up as a, a red flag, but uh, I don't have to tell you, you know, after the killing of George Floyd or after he died from his overdose, um, and, and defund the police. From my information, uh, from the neo-Nazi, he said that we have 3 million militia members, now we have 30 million with the defund the police business. 30 million armed uh, men and women representing the right. So, uh, and you've got 30 million Muslims. And the Muslims don't like the Jews and the ultra, ultra right-wing militias don't like the Jews. And I, I don't know if it's possible to find Christians who will defend the, the Jews in America, especially if the Jews are crazy uh, Bolsheviks with the Democrat Party. I have a sister who's like that. You know, I say to my sister, I say to her, please, let's not talk politics. But I will say one thing, right wing, left wing, doesn't matter. You pack your bags and come to Israel. And I will take care of you here. I don't think she's listening. Nobody believes that there's going to be an overthrow of the system in America as we know it today. And I don't have to tell you, it's very critical for Israel that we have a good government, uh, a, a good, how shall I say, I'm going to say Democrat, democratic government, uh, where there's respect for the law and respect for the will of the majority. And... Uh, we're going into very, very tense times in America and in Israel. I was looking at a feed, uh, one of the mirrors of feeds that he has through Telegram. And it had a picture of the New York Post. And it said that the guy that tried to kill, you know, the assassin for <clears throat> that he had spent the night there on the course, you know, where the course was and that it wasn't secured. So that's what the post said anyway. You know what, Glenda? It could possibly be that within the Secret Service, okay, the Secret Service probably said that area is not going to be protected and they called in the guy to kill him. There's so many possibilities. It could be a red flag from either side, but it could also be simply that somebody, some rogue uh, agent in the Secret Service made sure that that area was not uh, secure. The other thing, too, this is a change of subject, but uh, he sent me a post that says uh, religion, religion decline of Christians uh, in the um, Middle Eastern countries. And it was giving the dates of like 1932 in Lebanon it was 72%, where today it's only 32%. And then it went down from like, um, for Syria was like 23% and 43 to 1% now. And in Jordan, 25% in 1930. And in 24, it's 2%. And in Iraq, it was 16% in 1950, and today it's 0.2%. And that was. You know, the Glenda, I have a request. If you can email it to me, do you, is that on an email or is it like a book or something? No, it was uh, Amir. It was on his um, uh, Telegram, and I will send it to you. It's very important for me. But, you know, I want to stress something. Uh, did you ever meet Jody Anderson in Dallas? No, I didn't. 
Jody Anderson, rest in peace, and her husband, Pastor Keith, they, they were leading the what they call the Battalion of Deborah, uh, a group of Christian men and women that were you know, supporting Israel. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I told her about my idea for a Judeo-Christian party in Israel, uh, Jody said to me, you know, these uh, Christians in the Middle East, uh, they're not pro-Israel. They're not Texas Christians. You know, Texas meaning American Christian. And my wife also says to me that the Christians in the Middle East hate Israel because their t churches teach them. Their churches are the same uh, anti-Semitic ways as uh, from the last 2,000 years. Uh, the Texas Christians, or shall I say the American Christians, the Protestant Christians, uh, have gotten over the hatred business. Uh, even the Catholic Church uh, dropped the teaching, the misteaching that the Jews killed Christ uh, with Vatican II. Uh, but in the Middle East, and especially in the Orthodox churches, uh, we killed Christ. And so there's a very abysmal hatred of the Jewish people in these Christian churches. And so God is uh, denuding these countries of Christians. Uh, the Christians who are faithful to, to Christ, faithful to God, the Bible, to Israel, uh, these people love Israel. These people love the Jews. Uh, I think uh, there's a story some of you might have heard that Ted Cruz went to a uh, conference in, in Florida of Christians from Syria. And he spoke about the alliance with Israel. Everybody booed him. So, you know, if you... if not you. If somebody hates the Jews, they hate Christ. This is something I'm saying in all the churches. Uh, the problem is that there are Jews who are too busy being communists in the States and in other countries, and this creates anti-Semitism for political reasons. So what you said is 100% correct. Um, I think the only country in the Middle East where the Christian population is growing is Israel. So the Christian population is growing uh, where the Christians are close to the Israeli population and Israeli government. But the Muslims still believe, kill the Jew on Saturday, kill the Christian on Sunday. This, this is a problem. So I'm thinking to myself, if many, many American Jews and Christians make Aliyah and some of them go to live in... You know, we settle them in Lebanon. We bring the, the Protestant Christianity to Lebanon. This will be very important a step. The, the, because the Catholic Church, uh, the Pope, are totally against Israel. And the Orthodox churches are against Israel. You find every so often uh, within these churches some very Zionist, uh, biblical, uh, believing uh, Christians. Um, but they're very, very afraid to talk. Because the majority... In these churches in the Middle East are pro-Arab in order to stay alive. They're afraid. They're intimidated by the Muslims. Um, so all I can say is here in Israel, uh, our own problem is that we have Jews who also have a 2,000-year tradition of hating Christians. So we have to get over the hatred. We cannot come to the Bible-believing Protestant Christians and say, love us, or to the Catholics or to anyone and say, love us, but we hate you. So I feel very much alone in what I'm doing. It's very, I mean, there are people who understand what I'm saying, and they, but there are too many rabbis who hate Christians with a passion. It's 2,000 years. So it's very hard to, to teach love and overcoming the hatred. You know, it's the Christians who taught me to love, because I hated the Christians too. So... Uh, so you pray for me. I mean, pray for my family, pray for all of us, that we will wake up and understand that the Christians are our brothers and sisters, not our enemies. We're not going to make it without you. Or at least some of you. I think out of two billion Christians, including the Catholics and the uh, Greek Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, I think out of two billion, maybe 100 million, maybe 5% are pro-Israel. So in those countries, in those Arab countries where the, the church is more concerned about real estate, you know, because a lot of these churches are worth a lot of money as far as real estate. 
And uh, they're afraid that the churches will get burned down or taken over by the Muslims. You know, wherever the Muslims take over, they destroy the churches. You have a, 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 the greatest church in the Middle East in, in Istanbul, uh, Agia Sophia, and uh, taken over by the Muslims, turned into a mosque. That's what the Muslims do. They take churches and they turn them into mosques. So, listen, I'm a, in many circles, I would say in most circles, I'm very unpopular. Because if I defend the Christians, and I love the Christians, I'm, unpo I'm unpopular. Thank you, uh, Glenda. I appreciate, always appreciate your comments. You're welcome. <clears throat> I don't know what the percentage is, but uh, we were told that there were several million that are Christians that aren't even uh, registered to vote here. You know, they were trying to get people to vote, but they said that they, that there were like, I don't know how many million. Uh, 34. 34 million. Dude, 30 34 million Christians in America have not voted. And that's why Trump lost. I mean, Trump lost because the, the Democrats cheated, but uh, Trump lost because the Christians did not get uh, behind him. Yeah, you got to get, get them registered. But anyway, so how does uh, the uh, New Apostolic, how does that uh, fit in with, uh, with what's going on with Israel? The ones that are setting up the kingdom for the Lord to return to, you know, here. So, well, are you they, know, are they anti? Very, are they very anti? hard? Very hard for me to answer you. Uh, there are even uh, born again evangelical churches which go to Bethlehem and uh, they support the Palestinian cause and they say Jesus Christ was a Muslim. So you've got churches that also are a little crazy. Well, I knew I knew that there were some from here that did that. Anyway. Bobby, I have a couple of questions back to, right to, away. Back to people in Israel. Um <clears throat> it, two different questions about two different groups. First of all, the the people who are displaced in the north who have been living in hotels for almost a year now um how are they doing and are they able to work and just how how's that going and then second of all you talked about resettling gaza from you know being drug out in 2008 so do you think that will be the same families will go back like the families who were dragged out of gush katif and and whatnot do you think the same families will go back or do you is it is the plan it'll be bigger stronger more new different you know so those those two groups of people i would like to hear about fantastic questions and i hope i will uh, give you answers which will make you happy uh let's start with the second question the second question is about gaza uh and again i have to go back uh to the history of the communities that were surrounding gaza you had two two different types of jewish people you had those who, uh, uh, there, are, there are Jews who lived outside of Gaza, surrounding Gaza, and these people were primarily socialists. These people were very friendly on a personal basis with the Gaza Muslims. Uh, they provided work for them. Uh, they, took, they invited them to their homes. They took these Gaza people to the hospital for medical treatment. Uh, this is over a period of decades. And these people were ultra, ultra socialist, ultra left, believing in the um, uh, solidarity of the Jews and the Christians together in the homeland. And uh, on October 7th, these terrorists came in, raped and, and chopped people up, took babies and cooked them in a microwave in front of the eyes of their parents. And then they killed the parents too. Um, all this is documented. In other words, Israel, the Jewish people were so good to the Gaza Muslims, and these people were just so full of poison. Uh, it was the devil. It was, it was, it was terrible. Uh, so these are the people who were surrounding Gaza. Uh, I heard until now that either 50 or 70% of these have returned to their homes. They're now rebuilding the homes that got destroyed. Uh, so these, these socialists are coming back. Uh, a lot of them 
were slapped in the face so sufficiently that they are anti-Gaza now. They're, but they, they came back as Zionists. They came back to their homes. Now, regarding the 10,000 Jews who were uprooted from their homes by Ariel Sharon, uh, a lot of these people are wanting to go back, but the Israeli government, uh, out of fear of Washington, D.C., um, is not allowing yet for Jewish people to reset, resettle Gaza Strip. Uh, but people are talking about it. Uh, so let's say for now we're not talking about the, the Gaza Strip Jewish communities. We're talking about uh, the communities surrounding the Gaza Strip, and uh, I'm not sure of the numbers because more and more people are going home. Uh, the, the terrorists in Gaza every so often fire one or two little rockets. Um, they're, they're basically finishing off all of their inventory of rockets so people feel safer going back to their homes, rebuilding their homes. Um, this is a, a great victory for the Israeli government. But it cost us thousands of lives. Regarding uh, the Jews in the north of Israel, not just Jews, Arabs also, uh, who live in the north, who had to flee. Um, there are, is anywhere between 70,000 to 100,000 people who were uh, uprooted from their homes by the Israeli government um, And I, I think nobody talks about it, but I think the reason that the Israeli government initiated the withdrawal of the Jews from their homes on the Lebanese border was because there were, and I think there still are, tunnels under the border from Lebanon. And there was a great fear of an October 7th type attack on the Lebanese border. That's why the, the, the very few Jewish people have returned to their homes. And a lot of the homes have been blown to smithereens. Uh, by the shelling from uh, from Lebanon, but very very few very few people have been killed by the Hezbollah bombings. Of course, the twelve children playing soccer in Majd al Shams these are Druze people. Um, about another twenty people were killed in uh, different shooting, uh, different bombings, um, and these people will not go back to the north of Israel until the war is over in Lebanon. Meaning until we have uh, reached the Litani River. Litani River is about 10 miles away from Israel. But those 10 miles are very difficult to conquer because you have mountain ranges there. And uh, Hezbollah, which is Shiite Muslim, they built tunnels uh, to launch missiles at Israel under these Christian uh, towns. So Israel, in order to go in there, has to blow the heck out of the Christian towns, and Israel doesn't want to do it. We have a lot of political infighting now in Israel about what we're going to do about the south of Lebanon. But it might be, I personally think what might be is that uh, Israel will attack the airport in Beirut, uh, will attack the port in Be Beirut, uh, will attack infrastructure, bridges, uh, water supplies, electric supplies, uh, basically bomb them back uh, to, the, to the primitive days. Um, of course, the U.S. Uh, President Biden said don't, but we can't take it anymore. They keep shelling us and shelling us and shelling us in support of Gaza. But Gaza's pretty much finished. I don't know why uh, Hezbollah is so stupid. And uh, I said last week, one of the outcomes of the crazy behavior of the Iranians and Hezbollah and the Houthis is that the Druze uh, in Lebanon, I believe, the Druze in Lebanon are drawing closer to Israel. And the Druze in Syria are drawing closer to Israel. And so it might even be, uh, and I'm, this is just conjecture on my part, it might even be that the Israeli military will take up to the Litani, which is the south of Lebanon, and then continue a few more miles uh, and take and link up with the Druze in in also in southern uh, Lebanon, um, link up with them, link up with the Druze in the south of Syria, wipe out the, the Houthis who came from Yemen to, sh to shoot their UAVs at us. Um, Israel's borders, are, I think Israel's borders have to expand. Uh, and we will have a population of Druze people. They're not very numerous, but if they make the decision to be with Israel as allies, 
So we will have the Lebanese Druze, the Syrian Druze, and the Israeli Druze, one big happy family. Um, the Russians came in 10 years ago at the request of Netanyahu to save the Druze of the south of Syria, uh, but the Russians pulled out. The Russians are only now in the northwest of Syria, in the Tartus, um, and um, I forgot the name of the other town, the very big uh, port in, uh, in uh, northwest Lebanon. Uh, the Ukrainians attacked them yesterday. The Ukrainians came down from, from the Black Sea, from Ukraine, and attacked the Russian military and their UAVs and their missiles and all this stuff that are being stored in, in northwest Syria. Something crazy is happening now. We're full of surprises. But I think that uh, if and when this war takes place soon, uh, when it's over, the Israelis return to their homes. A lot of homes are completely destroyed. I think 500 homes are completely destroyed. They have to be totally rebuilt. And there are those who won't return. This is the cost of war. Did I answer you, my dear Laurie? Um, yeah, sure. So th are they mostly in hotels or are some of them just resettling further south? In some are in hotels. The majority are in hotels, but there are some people who bought apartments or rented apartments. Um, people find different solutions. So don't forget also that many people in the north have relatives in the south. So they're temporary solutions. But the more the war uh, lasts, the more uh, it's difficult for people from the north to think about going back. Mm -hmm. I will say one more thing, that uh, there is talk, serious talk, about uh, set, setting up uh, Jewish communities in the south of Lebanon. Because the Israeli military cannot be there protecting the north of Israel unless there are Jewish communities there. That's why I'm saying it's important to have Christian allies coming and living there too. You have a, a lot of material to think about now. Any more questions? Yes, I wanted to know, what is the time frame, do you think, that um, we should start migrating to Israel? Or well, Lebanon? At, at this stage, I, I'm a lonely voice in the wilderness. Uh, it is not possible yet for Christians to come and migrate. Right. I don't think I don't think that it will be possible for quite a while. I think what is now somewhat tolerated is Christian spouses of Jewish spouses. Okay. So, for example, if you have a Goldberg and he marries a Christian woman, she's a Goldberg. So right. she'll go to Israel with her husband. Or the other way, if it's a Christian man marrying a, a Jewish woman. And they got children. Right. And the children are going to be killed by the Muslims or the neo-Nazis because they're connected with the Jews. So they have to flee. They have to get out of there. They have to come to America, to Israel. Right. By the way, this year we have received 100,000 immigrants, which in time of war is very, very significant. Because usually <laughs> our immigrants uh, over the last few years was about 10,000, 20,000 a year. We got 100,000 this year with the war. I'm talking about hundreds of thousands or, or millions of people all of a sudden just showing up. Right. Unbelievable. But I do know that when the Messiah shows first or second time, he's coming for all of us. And all of us are going to go together up on the Mount of Olives and check his hands and feet. Hey, Avi, your son just posted some breaking news on Telegram. Uh, let me see. He said, 
He said cyber attack causes dozens, possibly hundreds of injuries to Hezbollah terrorists in Lebanon. That's from Aaron. I was just reading that. <laughs> you know what? I was watching TV until we started this show. So let me check Telegram real fast. That's from Aaron. You know what? You read it to me so I don't have to waste time with the technology. Okay, let me get back to it. Sorry. Uh, oh, and he's still typing. It says, cyber attack causes dozens, possibly hundreds of injuries to Hezbollah terrorists in Lebanon. Now, why would a cyber attack affect the, the Hezbollah? He says, the attack caused pagers that the terrorists were carrying to explode and injure their owners throughout Lebanon. Oh, wow, that's really a high tech. I never heard of that. Yeah. That's from Aaron. <laughs> I, I want you to know, I, I check the uh, responses from people who look at the YouTubes. And there's so many people who are saying, oh, you said these things 30 years ago and 20 years ago, and you were right, and we knew you were right, but now we know you're really right. So it, it's funny because my wife always says to me, I don't know anything, and I'm always wrong. You know, that's what wives say to their husbands. Uh, they say behind every successful man stands its little woman reminding him just how unsuccessful he is. So my wife is always reminding me how unsuccessful I am. But, you know, she didn't kill me in 55 years, so that's pretty good. You're all muted, so I can't hear if anyone's laughing at my silly humor. But uh, That must be a Jewish proverb. What's the, what's the Jewish proverb? Uh, yeah. About the, about you joke about the wives. Yeah. Well, I, always say to my wife, I, I always say to my wife, I have the last word. Yes, dear. How much, dear? Cash or credit, dear? I'm laughing. You're I'm laughing. laughing. Yeah. I know I can always re uh, rely on you, and I can always rely on Al when Al... Uh, is on this is online. I'm laughing and I agree with Rachel. <laughs> yeah. I've got so many remarks about the, the man have to having to be very careful about his wife, you know. Well, is Gantz gonna be able to keep his job? Huh? Isn't his name Gantz? Is he gonna be able to keep his job? Well, Gantz is in the opposition. He wants to return uh, to the government. But I, I think that the fear is that Gantz or Gallant, all these people, uh, you know, there's a saying in English, uh, keep your friends close and keep your enemies closer. Uh, so I think that Netanyahu is very careful about who he keeps close and who he keeps closer. Um, because like I said before, 5.6 million Israeli Jews support Netanyahu. And 3,000 are violently against Netanyahu and threatening a coup d'etat, you know, overthrowing Netanyahu with the help of Washington. Don't forget, Washington today is not a Christian country. Washington is deep state. So it's very important uh, to vote for Trump. Isn't it wonderful that I'm not an Israeli official? I'm a free agent. Yeah, are you getting any kickbacks from being a free agent? No, my kickbacks are from God uh, through people like you. <laughs> I don't want to mention names because you should never mention names of people who help you financially because then everyone goes running over to them asking for money. But there's some very good people in this uh, group that I'm talking to now and in the Thursday group, and uh, they help keep me afloat because I'm not in churches. I can't go to speak to groups. I see my, my dear, beloved Christine Varg is online here. And uh, whenever she comes to Israel, uh, I'm so happy to be invited to go to speak to her group. Uh, and now even Christine is coming less and less because of the situation. And the war could break out with Lebanon tonight. Uh, the, the Israeli government is uh, making their decision uh, this evening about uh, when the war starts. Hi, Avi. It, <laughs> I have to respond. This is Christine. Oh, I missed you, Christine. It's so good to see you. We're coming less because we've had a health issue. 
but Peter will have passed six months of that attack when he fell and hit his head on November the 29th, and he'll be free to travel again. So this is what we're hoping. By but the way, you, we, are, we welcome you and Peter to come stay in our house. Uh, we miss you very much. Oh, thank you so much. You know, we have a place right inside Jaffa Gate, so we're hoping to get back. But when you were speaking, Abi, yeah. I was thinking about many years ago when we were living in Mevasert Zion, I turned on the radio at a very strategic moment and I heard Major, um, who was it, honey, Haddad, who was heading up the Southern Christian Militia. Oh, ah, yes. Major Haddad. Uh, and, and he Haddad, was speaking right. to Israel and he was speaking with such love. He was saying, our blood has... Uh, flowed together, and we need to serve one another. And he allowed George Otis Sr., a blessed memory, to come in there and, and start the first Christian radio station. Right. Which, you know, evolved into Middle East television, uh, CBN's Middle East television, which sent us out there originally, you know, gave us our excuse to go out there and live. But right. it, it's so amazing how he had that enclave and now you're talking about a similar type enclave coming about. Correct. You know, I have to tell you, uh, there were four women. They're called the, the four mothers. And they started demonstrating and demonstrating, pull out of Lebanon, pull out of Lebanon. And uh, Ewan Barak, who was prime minister at the time, said, okay, we pull out of Lebanon. So now we have this war with Lebanon. Because Ewan Barak pulled out of the security zone. And even the Christians, there were 7,000 uh, SLA soldiers, South Lebanese Army soldiers, and I was in the homes of some of them up in the north. I invited them to join my political party, and they all said no, because there's a colonel in the Israeli army who said, if you go with Avi Lipkin and his party, we will stop all support for you. And they, they had received Israeli citizenship. They could vote, and they were Israeli citizens. And yet, uh, obviously, the socialists, uh, the deep state people, had control over them also. So, you know, we have no elections uh, scheduled until 2026, another two years. But uh, I have everybody's telephone number, and I'm going to start calling everyone again but as soon as we know that there's an election on the way. Yes, we, we have to return to southern Lebanon and we have to we have to be, behave ourselves with the Christians of the south of Lebanon. Uh, we did not uh, behave like we should have behaved with allies. So that bothers me very much. Thank you, Christine. Love you. Love you too. And Give Peter, 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 Peter a big hug from me. Say hello to Avi. Hi, Avi. <laughs> Peter! I, I promise I will behave myself. I'll pick on you, but I'll be very nice about it. Fair enough. <laughs> Just come safely to Israel, feeling good, completely restored. We appreciate your prayers so much. Well, they, they were they were very sincere, very deep. He's a miracle man, that is for sure. Yes. And and you know what's so amazing is uh, when we got back to England. Uh, Arabic speaking doctor there, there's so many of them. He had to admit, he said the Israelis did a fantastic job keeping your husband alive. Right. No, is, Israeli medicine is the best in the world. And I'll tell you, uh, even uh, with the uh, Arabs, even with terrorists uh, who, who get injured and they end up in the Israeli hospitals, our doctors take care of them like they're Israelis. A lot of people complain about it, but uh, there is no religion. There is no ideology for doctors. Their only ideology is healing people. Well, you know, Brigitte Gabrielle worked in our office for many years. Yes. And now she's one of the best voices in America. And yes, I she, love Brigitte Gabrielle. How did she become pro-Israel? Because she went through the good fence when her mother was dying, and she took her mother to a hospital. And she was stunned that her mother was given priority over Israelis. And from that right. day 
on, she was a staunch supporter. Right. I, I have never met her personally, but I know someone who's very close to her, so we kind of like send messages to, to each other. Yeah, I am close with her too, and I was just thinking now that you two really need to get together. Yeah, uh, no, I'd love to. I'd love to. I just, to don't know, I, just don't, I just don't know when I'm going to travel again. Mm -hmm. I, I don't feel that it is possible for me to leave my wife here when uh, one of the things we're told every day in the news is that Judea and Samaria could face uh, October 7th type attacks. So we have a community of 250 people, but we're surrounded by 100,000 terrorists. So I, I don't move from my wife for a moment. I'm sure she'd like to get away from me, but uh, I have my gun ready and I'm ready. Listen, I'm almost 76. If I have to go, I go, but I, I'm going to defend my home and my wife and Israel. Amen. But anyway, you guys come in November and uh, we're waiting for you to see you anytime you're free. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm very happy you showed up. I saw you, your email. Said, oh, put her on the list. Have her maybe uh, join our show, a show, a program. Amen. <laughs> It's such a wonderful thing for me when I speak to people. I say, oh, do you know Christine Dark? Oh, yes, of course we know her. <laughs> Everyone I speak to knows Christine Dark. So. Everyone knows Avi. Uh, not everyone. You know who doesn't know me? The Israeli public doesn't know me. And uh, there are people in charge of the Israeli uh, media. They, I'm Cinderella, let me tell you, first class. <laughs> The only people who know me are my dear Christian uh, brothers and sisters from uh, the West. Here, even uh, Angela is here hiding somewhere, and she brought me to the island of Jersey. So they know me in Jersey. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Christine. It's lovely Hi. to hear your voice. Love you so much. I love you too, and Peter. Sending blessings. You're in my prayers, both of you. Oh, you and how's been brilliant. <laughs> and we pray for Avi. Avi, we pray for yeah. you. You know what? I feel every morning I wake up and I put on my armor. The armor is your prayers. I can feel the armor. I can feel God is protecting me and my family. Hallelujah. <laughs> God bless you. Bless you too. I see there's a lady by the name of Annette. Is that Annette Powell? No, I I, I put it on my phone because I had to go out the, out the uh, room. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad you're here. I'm in both places. <laughs> uh, what do you think, your God? <laughs> oh, no, but I need him. <laughs> Well, do you think that's a wrap for today, Avi? Yeah, I think we're good. I have to get ready for the, uh, at the top of the hour, uh, my show with the Southwest, uh, not Southwest Radio Church, with uh, God's Learning Channel. And uh, looking forward to it. Okay. Oops. Shalom, shalom. Oh. Thank you very much, Avi. Thank and, you. Uh, by the way, if, bye, anyone everyone. Gets, if anyone gets more information, week. You can send me emails, and if I get information, I'll send it to you, Laurie, and you can tell the group. Okay. Thank okay. you, everybody. Shal bye. Shalom. 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 Bye-bye. Bye. Shalom. Bye.